Welcome to Livestream. I'm your host, Dr. Alex Plains, with my co-host, Jeremy Applegate. And today we have two amazing guests. Um, one of them is a personal friend of mine, Chad Gates and Greg Forrest from the Forrest team of Sotheby's Realty. We're excited to have you guys here today. Thank you for coming in today, guys. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. So you're welcome. So this has been a very interesting topic that is all around, you know, um, what's going on with the markets. You know, we've had a lot of shifts um, people are really concerned. Are we in a recession? Are we not in a recession? Should we buy real estate in Florida? Should we not? What do you, how do you feel about the current marketplace right now? How do you guys feel about it? Yeah. Um, that's, that's the number one question. I think everyone is, uh, has been asking since the beginning of time. Okay. <laughs> is, uh, can you predict the future? Um, I mean, we saw like, probably like a year ago, guys, like people were just lining up to buy houses. Yeah. I mean, people were, you know, even like down in Miami, I mean, there was videos of people just standing on the sidewalk, you know, down the street from the house, um, you know, waiting to get in. So the market has definitely shifted. I'm kind of telling people that it's just slow and steady right now. Okay. Um, we're kind of seeing pre pandemic, you know, activity, but you know, uh, Six months, a year ago, you were standing there bidding over ask. You were waiving all your inspections. Uh, now you can kind of get under ask. You don't have to waive inspections. So that's probably a 10% over ask. And now we're probably more 10% under ask. Okay. So there's about a 20% swing right now. I tell people, um, you know, if you have a, a good representative that knows how to negotiate and get you the best price. Okay, so in the last... Um how long have you been in the field for? Uh, coming up on 10 years. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. So in the last couple of years, what type of increase have you seen in the state of Florida when it comes to pricing, like 20, 30 percent? Just depends on the area. I mean, I think overall we saw um, a little over like 25, 30 okay. percent countywide. But then we have certain areas that have doubled, even tripled. Tripled. I mean, current clients of mine, past clients of mine have seen their houses double and triple. Yeah, Chad, how much, yeah. Have, how much have things gone up in our community? I mean, they've doubled or tripled. Wow, that's intense. So basically, if you were to, if you, if, would you go to states like New Jersey where the states, where you have all these taxes, do you think the real estate market is going to stay um, the same way there? Or you think Florida has a competitive advantage when it comes to the real estate market? Yeah, I mean, we've always kind of been in what people call a tax haven, um, you know, people come down here because they can get relief on their income taxes, right? So um, everybody makes a little bit of a deal about our property taxes, but when you sit down with your accountant and you look at the numbers, you're saving money by buying Florida real estate. It's just science. Okay. So That's great. And what about multifamilies versus, we were talking the other day about commercial versus um, single family homes or getting multifamilies or what, what, if you're young and if you're looking into investing, right, as a young investor or even, you know, whatever age you are, where would you recommend somebody to do to make passive income? Yeah. So, I mean, passive income. They're all each, they each have their pros and yeah, cons. They do. I own several um, right. single family homes and they're pretty hard to manage. They are. They are. And one of my mentors is always like, man, I have too big of a heart to, uh, to own multiple properties because he tells a story about a lady who, you know, was his tenant, and then basically, uh, you know, she was going through some tough times, and and he ended up, you know, going to see her because she missed a couple of rent payments, and he ended up paying her rent for the whole year. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You know, because he's a multimillionaire, and yeah. he can do that. Um, so I think people that have tough skin, you know, definitely could be um, long-term, uh, you know, investors in real estate. Um, I, myself, work in the business, so... Um, you know, I invest in real estate too, but it's not, it's not my, my 100% job because it does distract me from okay. my, my sales job. Okay. So, but, um, for people out there that want to invest in real estate, it's, it's all in. I mean, you got to treat it like it's your job and you got to have tough skin. 
Perfect. And speaking of jobs and stuff like that, let's get get a little background. How long have you guys been doing real estate? How long? I mean, Greg, like he said, he's ten years. Um, I'm probably eight months. Okay. So I. Uh, Chad's tra- a greenie. <laughs> yeah. Is that what it's called now, greenie? So I was in hospitality for seven, eight years. Okay. Um, high end market in Palm Beach, and then uh, you know have a small family at home, and that just took away way too much time. So now that I'm out of it, I got time for the family, but taking all our, you know, service side from hospitality into real estate. So I know we're talking about real estate, but you brought up something very important and something that a lot of um, either dental practice owners or entrepreneurs want to know. Like when you used to work in an amazing, um, like you said, a high end um, property. Um, and you know, when you go to those properties, the customer service and everything is just top notch. So for people that want to create that type of environment in like, like in my dental practice, I've always had a dream of like people saying, man, I go to that practice and it's like going to the Ritz or it's like going to the four seasons. Um, I'm sure you guys received a lot of training, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's more the hiring, um, you know, higher rise people, you get the right service. Um, but there's a lot of training. I, mean, I took probably in the eight years, almost a, a year of it was training, wow. you know, making sure you're doing the right thing, saying the right thing, not getting in people's face. Okay. Um, customers it, always right. Kind of customers mentality. always right. I mean, they're paying the money. Okay. So um, the service was huge and we, we gave five star service every day. Didn't matter who it was, what they did, what they didn't do. Um, but that's a big thing. You got to give everybody the same service. And based on the culture that, and you, I'm sure you have the same issues. How many people do you have in your team? If you yeah, don't mind so, me asking. Yeah, uh, so I brought Chad on. Chad's been a friend of mine since we were probably, what, eight? Oh, that's uh, great. That's awesome. Working town. with your best friend. Yeah, yeah. Um, awesome. You know, and so it's an easy bring on, you know, hire for me because he knows the service industry and we try to emulate, you know, at Sotheby's. Sotheby's is just the cream of the crop when it comes to real estate service and my own boutique team, we have four of us total, including me. So I have a client concierge um, who handles a lot of the transactions um, from start to, you know, finish um, what we would call contract to close. And then I have a personal assistant that helps okay. me run my schedule. Like I'm literally, I call her the schedule queen. Like I don't, I'm, I'm not allowed now to schedule anything. Does she know anybody? Because, you know, we need one, too. Yeah. I mean, we can we can do another podcast and we'll talk about that. Because, um, um, you know, it takes it takes a while to hire the right people. It too. does. I mean, the I people are so through, important. You know, three or four to get my team now. And then Chad brought him on. And, you know, we're just kind of, you know, prospecting every day. I mean, that's that's what I get coached. What do you do. like to – like, I – I focus more, I, I'm really not that focused on the, um, the training. I, I mean, I've gotten employees of mine that have no dental experience, but if they have a positive mindset, yeah. I'm willing to put in the energy to train them to get them where they need to be. And some people learn quicker than others, right? But if they're positive and they show up on time and they have the right mindset, I think everything else can be coached. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, again, my mentors, they would tell me the same thing. Um, is that you hire integrity, you hire values, you hire attitude, and then you can teach them how to do it. I mean, people develop bad habits over time, and then they just kind of get stuck in that, and they think, For oh, sure. well, my last job, I did it like this. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. not this job. Correct. Right. Yeah. So you just mentioned some very important elements there. So right away, you're focusing on the values. So when I started this business back in 2014, I didn't know anything about mission, vision, and values, right? So we just went with the flow, did our best, patient care, and everything else follows. Um, But now in 2020, 2021, we started with our mission, with our vision, and our values. And it's completely changed my mindset when it comes to owning and operating a business and hiring the right people. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, so just a quick backstory, too. I'm involved in a coaching company, so I'm actually a student. Oh, wow. So I get coached, and it's pretty high level accountability. And we're every couple of weeks we have a call, but we have a, all all this homework and stuff. But so I get a lot of my um, nuggets from them. Okay. And, and um, you know we do a John Maxwell. Every he's just so I told him I told him where to hit it, and then he hits it in the lake, right? So and he's like, "You got it in my head." He's like, "Never tell me what to do again, but unless I ask." Uh-huh. 
right? And so that kind of like stuck with me. Like, yeah. so now like if I'm showing a property, if I'm sitting with the client, I sense something, I'll, I'll kind of like catch myself and let them talk because you never want to shop and, you know, do sales with your own wallet. You never want to yeah. do it with your own mind, really. You just want to yeah. let people sort of dictate and then you're there to like make sure that they're making the right decision and we're getting the best price. Right. Yeah. That's well said. Um, and then your, your second question was, I forget it's, it's early. Yeah. I, do you remember Jamie? <laughs> what are you putting me on the spot for? I'm, I'm, I'm processing. Well, you. well basically um, everybody watching remembers. Of course not. Nah, it's work. okay. It's okay. It happens. So I, 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 you know, I've seen like, I bought like Redfin um, stock and Zillow stock. Zillow blew up with the whole um, after the pandemic. And, you know, in my industry, we are trying to find avenues of artificial intelligence to replace human capital. And I'm being completely transparent. Um, do you see any shifts in the real estate market that are going to happen where we won't need sales agents anymore or real estate agents? Um, I don't. I mean, I think there might be a section right, of the industry that people try that. But, you know, we have a 70-item checklist from contract to close. That, yeah, that. that, That's just, I mean, there's so many different things that, you know, go into it. Um, And there's just so many nuances that, you know, a computer, like, I mean, I laugh at these commercials where these people are like, we saved (laughs) 30,000 using Homelite. Exactly. You saved 30,000 maybe on the purchase price or some made up price. Um, but you know, if I was there, could we have saved more? Probably. More right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't feel personally comfortable allowing somebody to just walk into my house and having little cameras installed in different aspects of the house, like no one there to supervise what they're going. I mean, they're going through your house, right? Yeah. So I, I think I I've, I've heard that there's a lot of debate if they're going to, do it and like you said there might be a specific market that will be okay with that but the high-end market definitely will not be okay with that i don't think so yeah i mean like you said there's a seven there's probably 70 things from start to finish yeah i mean you got inspections you got i mean it just goes on and on i would never imagine it was that much because um i bought in several properties and you know that you get the documents now through email they're docu sign you sign them and then you proceed but 70 that's a lot yeah i mean if you do do it on the luxury side for sure And we do a lot of, like, wow checklists, too. So, like you said, you're trying to – I think maybe you were talking about this earlier. um, You're trying to create an experience, right? Yep. Where people are like, hey, man, I had a great experience with Alex. You should go see him. Yes. Right? So, we we don't – like, we're in, like, a commodity business. Like, it's like you're a dentist. I'm in real estate. It's like we can't – we don't have, like, necessarily this golden ticket product. It's the same thing. We just have to do it a little bit better, a little different, um, and different. So we have like different check wow, you know, wow checklist items where we'll send like cookies when you go under contract and write that's sweet. You're under contract, and so like somebody gets a box of cookies, it's like it's just cookies, but it's just an extra little, little thing, touch. right? That well, I was makes telling Chad warm and exactly. I was telling Chad the other day when we were um, at a friend's house that I love what you guys do with the uh, with the. Um, with the letters that you send is a nice paper, you know, we all get a, a visual of Chad's beautiful family. And then, you know, you already build that connection with Chad even before you even meet him. Right. right. Which I, I think that's a nice touch that your team is doing for sure. Yeah. And that's something I've been coached to do. And we, we I've never letters. seen that before. We send letters of the heart. It's just, I think people are sick of realtors saying just sold, just listed, just sold, yes. just listed. So we talk about something maybe we're struggling with something maybe that we, can mention is like a highlight in our life like Chad has three beautiful kids and he can easily talk about them um I'm still single I have a, a beautiful little dog but uh you know um well, that's got to be on there right yeah I always say I take any kind of leads you know real estate or you know awesome potential date leads um <laughs> we got to get you in but, a dating uh, app yeah yeah uh, no 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 app no it needs all to sell cold more. leads sell more dating cold? apps or cold leads it's just like working a Zillow lead it's yeah it's difficult <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, just make a comment at the bottom of the uh, at the podcast. OK, so if you're, you know, um, a professional or in a, in a different type of industry. Right. And you um, want to diversify. 
is there a specific percentage or it's personalized? If you want to put 20% in real estate, 30 in stocks, 20 in your 401k for long term, what would you advise somebody that's interested in their 30s or in their 20s that want to retire by the, like their 60 yeah, for passive income? Chad can probably talk to this too, but we, you know, I get uh, my mentor, like, well, we're big on investing in the market, like in the stock market. Okay. Like I think, I think real estate is a, is a little portion of it, but I think that there's just, it's when you're like focused on, I think too many people try to do so many different things and then their time gets, gets just, 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 you know, vacuumed up. So I think stocks, it's, it's a click of a button and you're it's so easy in, now you can do it in your apps. You're in investing your in quality companies that are going to stand the test of time. And I think, you know, we do, I mean, I think the S and P 500 is something that's just made, consistently 11% over time since the beginning of time. Yep. So like half of my portfolio is that, and then I have, you know, the other sort of 40% with friends that, you know, try to beat that. Um, and then I kind of have some play money that I'll throw in a little crypto and yeah, to invest in real estate. Exactly. And, yeah. Yeah. See, see what he just said about the S&P 500. And I didn't understand that because, you know, everyone talks about 2008, 2009. Now what's happening, you know, this big drop. But if you look at the graph from 1920 or whenever yeah. the S&P 500. It's yeah. guaranteed money. It, it, it always goes up. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's Warren Buffett. Like, and that's what real estate people are like, oh, where's the market going? Like, you just buy homes. Like, you just get in the market. It's not about timing the market it's being in the market right and over time like i've been talking to my assistant about this i'm like you you can leverage and buy another property you know to to potentially have two properties that you could have retire on um you know because she's you know just in a spot where yeah i mean it's it just makes sense to to sort of leverage and we're, we're big on leveraged luxury real estate so try to tell clients like 3x your income you know okay. buy buy a house 3x your income right work hard pay it you know, just invite people over, right? Be, be hospitable. Um, you guys were talking about cars earlier. Like my, uh, yeah, like one of my coaches would say, you buy a fancy car, you get a bunch of haters. <laughs> buy a nice house, get a bunch of lovers. Yeah, yeah. that's true. So true. And you just, you just brought up. I know a, that sounds like a sales pitch. You just brought up a topic true. that everyone is talking about. You got all these guys um, trying to, um, I have the secret to make money in real estate with no money down, um, you know, you can start from nothing doing Airbnbs. Um, how do you guys feel about that model that a lot of investors are doing um, with zero down? I don't know how that's a possibility, but I guess they have it figured out. Is there a secret sauce to this or that we're not aware of or I'm not aware of? I mean, I don't think it's zero down. But I mean, you, I think that's small. I think there's a few maybe lenders that are doing zero down private, but they're 9 10% interest rate. Okay, um, hard money. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, it, you know, somebody might email you and say, oh, I got a guy that does 7%. Okay, 8%, no, no, but, that's... <laughs> you know, Chad's done a lot of traveling, too, so what do you think of Airbnbs, Chad? I mean, I think they're great. I mean, for the investment side, I mean, you can, if you get 60% a year, you know, wow, say big. occupancy. Yeah. So if, you, you, if you got 365 days and you get 60%, you can make a lot of money. You know, but hotel, like, I look at it from the hotel side. You know, if you're charging average daily rate of 125 bucks, and you got a three thousand dollar mortgage, you can probably make some money. Gotcha. So, I mean, it's all price point and where you're at, location. But it must be. A, do the do they help you or support you in any avenue like Airbnb? Um, or they don't. Do they keep a percentage of it? And that's yeah, how they, they make their money. Yeah, there's a massive percentage. But they also hook you up with great insurance. Um, you know, so you you basically have to hire the team to run it. Okay. Because if I ran Airbnbs every day and sold luxury real estate, I would not have the time to sell luxury real estate. It just takes up your time. So, so you hire, you know, a great, um, you know, team. Would it be like a management? Co- okay, yeah, yeah, like sure. a management company. Yep. Yep. So, so yeah, there's a, there's everyone's like Dr. Plains. Why don't you start doing Airbnbs? And you know, I've been very skeptical. Like I said, I had several single family homes, and there, there's a lot of headaches. Yeah. And I'm getting maybe 3 to 4% a year on my money. I would say, so I'm like a aggressive conservative, right? So I'm big on taking risks in real estate because I think real estate, they're just not making any more of it, right? But I think when you buy an Airbnb, the key is to look at it from an, a, a, a traditional rental perspective, right? 
is this property going to cash flow if Airbnb people stop traveling here, right? Which I don't see that happening soon. But if somebody would rent this annually, am I at least breaking even or cash flowing, right? And then Airbnb might be the cream on the, you know, on the top to to access, you know, some more, you know, income on your property. So we were talking the other day, Chad, when we were at a friend's house about commercial versus residential. And I believe you told me commercial all day. Maybe. Was it you? Uh, I don't know. I think it's. I don't know if it was him. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think we were. residential sales. Yeah. No, because I think we were talking about commercial on the bottom and then um, having apartments or condos on the top. And you're like, Alex, that's a great idea. No, we I can- think that's. Yes. That's fabulous. Yeah. I mean, if it's one or the other, commercial or residential, okay. I would say residential. Yeah. But if, if you can get mixed. Yeah, I mean, my number one mentor says to buy a commercial building and put your own office in it. Okay. Yeah, that's what I should have yeah. done. You now know, I'm and paying. then lease out other exactly. offices in it. Yeah, I remember when tradition a lot was... Of, a lot of tax evasion. Um, when, when tradition started... Too, um, are you familiar, Greg, with the tradition area? Yeah. Here? When tradition started, I mean, we could have literally bought in like half an acre to build a mega dental office for like $200,000. I mean, this was literally like five years ago and now i'm like man did i screw up I, because now i'm paying i love my spot don't get me wrong but now i'm paying you know constant rent and i'm not getting any appreciation on yeah. the value yeah yeah i mean if the market continues to like soften a little bit you know i mean that's that's definitely probably your the, best bet the, the is, right, to, is to find a building the right move right especially if you you know i mean you're crushing it in the dental game and you see you know at least 10 more years of you know, Alex being very successful, hands down, you know, Go you for buy it. your, yeah. And even if you decide to do something else down the line, right, it's, you own a great commercial building in a great area, it's. Yeah, it's there's key. a lot of dentists um, that bought buildings, they had their dental office, they sold their dental office, but they're getting the rent now when they're retired constantly from the building. Yep. So that's a great move. We should look at You're writing that down? I got it. I got that remembered now. All right, yeah, take some sure. notes. Yeah, we might know somebody that can help you. I, maybe uh, you might know somebody. Maybe right. might be two guys in this <laughs> sitting here. So if we, uh, I know you guys are not tax experts, but I get asked all the time by my friends and my colleagues, "Hey, Alex, if you buy real estate, what are the benefits? Not only because you're getting that as a tax benefit, and I know you guys are not experts in tax. You guys are not accountants or CPAs, but is there anything that you see? Because like I was at the point of getting my money, and instead of paying the IRS, whatever percentage I'm due to them, right, every single year, getting that and taking assets that I can depreciate over time. Yep. Yeah, so you can write off your interest. I mean, you know, you have what we call the homestead exemption. You get a little bit of savings having a primary residence. If you have a secondary residence or an investment, you can uh, accelerate the depreciation depreciation or you can, you know, account for the depreciation, but you can also accelerate it um, you know, to, to really kind of front end your, um, you know, your cash so that you're not paying the taxes now. Um, because I think taxes are like, almost like royalties, right? In a business, you just, it just, it's kind of sucking the money out of your business as you go. So if you can accelerate that depreciation, then, you know, you're paying it later, kind of building, you know, equity and, and, and letting compounding, yeah, when I started building dental, when I was building um, dental offices, like everyone was like, Alex, you know, depreciate. I was depreciating right away because guess what I did? By doing that, I paid less in taxes. And guess what I did with that money that I had earned? I reinvested and opened yes, up more businesses. Business, sure. So those are, you know, those are a lot of people don't understand that. You know, dentists are terrible businessmen, just so you know. <laughs> We're so focused on all the facts that we just don't you know, do the amount like of growing, you know, your portfolio and investing. So I've been telling my friends like buy a dental office. I mean, you're going to make X amount of dollars monthly. Yes. And then you're also going to be able to depreciate it over time. Or if you can accelerate it, like you guys just said. Yep. So real estate depreciation guys. Yep. (laughs) So is there anything else that you guys want to talk about? Any important elements? Yeah, I have a question. You know, we are you, uh, before are you sponsored by Mountain Dew. Do the do. Do the do. do, the do. This might actually get you sponsored, actually. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Um, 
you know, I see a lot of stuff going around, and this is just from the outside guy looking in on this, but everybody's, everybody's like, buy, not buy, buy, not buy, buy, not buy. You know, you're going to overpay or you're going to pay too much interest. Yeah, we were talking about it stuff. yesterday. I was like, maybe, Jeremy, you should wait till, like, summer of next year to yeah. see what happens with the feds. What's the what's your guys' opinion on that? I mean, like he said, though, I mean, 18 months ago, probably paying 10% over. And now you're probably 10% under, so that's 20, 20% swing. Yeah. I mean, and then you look the at interest rates. Up, but, you know, interest rates are a little higher. But when you look at the big, the big know, picture, the big picture, 10 years from now, You'll have you'll have equity. I think any yeah. even if you buy right now, even if you bought at peak, right? I think that um, Florida is just a, such a growing market. I mean, they just released that the ten fastest cities, and Florida had three of them in the ten yes. in the United States. So, I mean, Florida is booming. Why do you think Grand Cardone is like Florida, 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 Texas, Florida, Texas, Florida, like? All these states are just blowing up. So, I mean, the cost of living, your dollar lasts a lot longer. I mean, I know people in Florida complain about the cost, but try living in New York or in California or in Washington State. No state income tax. Exactly. And really to answer your question, man, like I think this is a profound thought that I think people need to, to take, and it's just investing is math. It's not emotions. It's doing the same thing over and over. I love that. So in, in, um, you know, when you're investing in the stock market, the best way to invest is monthly because you're what you would call dollar cost averaging, right? Yep. It's the same thing in real estate. Like if you get caught up in, should I buy? Should I not buy? I don't know how many people I've talked to that have said, I should have bought way more than I should have not bought, right? Um, because if you're, if you're, you know, going to work every day and you're sticking to your plan, your business plan, you shouldn't worry about, paying for what you're buying, right? Like if you budget out what you're going to buy, you shouldn't worry about that. I mean, I just think people get too caught up in their emotions and it's, and it's math. It's not emotions. Yeah. You got to live without fear, Jeremy. No that's, fear. That's one of the, uh, that's one of the mottos. That's right. Be fearless. That's, He's got a that's no correct. fear undershirt under that shirt. I think you want to show everyone. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, well, thank you guys for being a part of the show today. Um, I hope our listeners loved. There was a lot of different interesting topics. We talked about real estate, accounting, depreciation, the current marketplace. So bottom line is, if you, got, if you wanted to invest in real estate, there might never be the right time. You just got to take the initiative, invest when you got that opportunity or you got that dream home you're looking into purchasing. And if you got that dream home you're looking into purchasing, look these guys up. That's yes. right. The Greg Forrest team, my man, Chad, thank you for coming. Thanks, Greg, yeah. thank you for awesome. coming today. It's, it's been awesome. great. You can follow us at Dr. Alex A. Plains or on YouTube, live stream with Dr. Alex Plains. Thank you. Mm-hmm.